Okay, so now we're going to beginning chapter five. In chapter five, we're gonna be learning more about how neural communication occurs. And in that sense, I mean how neurons are physically able to communicate with each other. So we learned in chapter four that there are excitatory inhibitory signals. What you're gonna learn about more in this chapter is how chemicals carry the neuron signal and are used to transmit the messages. Uh, there's also receptors that receive those chemicals to produce behavior. So these are the fundal elements of how neural communication occurs. Uh, first now, we're going to take a quick step back and look at how it was discovered that uh, neurons communicate via a chemical message. So your heart beat quickens if you are excited or exercising, and if you are resting, it slows. How is it that this occurs? So to investigate this, uh, we had uh, some researchers did an experiment a while back, and what they did is they took a frog heart, in which case the frog, the heart is a muscle. You know, you can take it out from the body and it could still be functional, as much as they would, similar to what they would do for a heart transplant. So they put it in this fluid that would um, mimic um, the uh, extracellular environment, and they stimulated the heart here, okay, on the vagus nerve, and uh, recorded its activity, and they also had a second heart over here. So when they stimulated the heart to beat slower, for example, to slow down, then the heart was beating thump, 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 and as it stimulated, it would slow down, thump, 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 thump. So the amazing thing that happened is that even this, this heart over here, even though it wasn't directly stimulated, it started to slow down too. So what this experiment indicated is that there was some chemical that was being released that traveled you know, in this fluid, which mimics extracellular fluid, and would then influence the neurons that were in this heart muscle. So the conclusion from this experiment is that a chemical message is released by the nerve to be received by other nerves. So it is chemicals that relay excitatory messages to say speed up or inhibitory messages to say slow down. Uh, we also have Otto Lowy's research which looked into epinephrine, um, also known as adrenaline, and this is a chemical message that acts as a hormone to mobilize the body for fight or flight during times of stress. And then you also have neuroepinephrine or neuroadrenaline. And this neurotransmitter is found in the brain in the synaptic division of the autonomic nervous system. And this accelerates the heart rate in mammals. So some of Otto Lowy's early research was really instrumental in demonstrating that it is a chemical message that is transmitted from one neuron to the next. So this leads us to the question, what is a neurotransmitter? What is this chemical message? So a neurotransmitter is a chemical released by a neuron or nerve onto a target neuron or tissue with an excitatory or inhibitory effect. So a neurotransmitter, you learn about these, you hear about these all the time in terms of medication, uh, food, different types of behavior, addiction, everything neurotransmitters that are the central element of how your body communicates with itself is a chemical. And this chemical is released from one neuron to be received by another neuron or tissue. Outside the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system, many of these chemicals can also circulate in the blood as hormones. So a neurotransmitter um, is a chemical. If this neurotransmitter is released from you know, direct or sort of close neuron-to-neuron -neuron contact, then it's called a neurotransmitter. If it's released into the bloodstream, then it's called a hormone. So oftentimes there is no structural difference between the chemicals that are released from one neuron to the next and the hormones that can influence uh, multiple neurons more broadly.